All you people that say I shouldn't cut these up into firewood, well, this one's for you. Dig drive, DIY. I bring a lot of logs home to turn into firewood. And rightfully so, a lot of people say, why don't you just turn some of that into lumber? I agree, but I'm not much of a woodworker and I don't have a sawmill. But fortunately, we're headed off for spring break and the place we're going does have a sawmill. So I'm gonna take as big a log as I can fit in the back of my pickup along with me and see if we can make up some boards. You know what, this is the log I cut across the road and it just doesn't look that good to me. It's got wide growth rings. I don't know what species it is. I'm just gonna take a piece of this oak. This is oak that came from Kara's parents' house. I will make a few boards out of that regardless. Now, can I get in the back of the truck without wrecking anything? Most people take logs on vacation, don't they? My wife is a patient person. <laughs> Ready? I think so. <laughs> what about you girls? I'm ready. I'm ready. Starting to see some hills. The flatlands of Indiana and northern Ohio have given way to some uh, rolling terrain here in southern Ohio. But we are on our way to a place called Cairn Creek. I think what we should have for dessert tonight. What's that? A little rocky road. <laughs> I thought it was funny. A little rocky yeah, road. Now, is that cool looking or what? It's beautiful. It's so cute. Yeah, that is that. awesome looking. I love that black with uh -huh. the gray with black. Look, really they just good. added this room. The room that that great big room you see there. Jeez. With the big window. Yep. They just added that. It was a that deck. Is gorgeous. Look at this little gym in the middle of the woods. Gosh, I would love to have a place like this. Knowing where this started and where it is now is something else. Here we go. Oh, it even smells good. Holy cow, look at these steps. I love the floor. I love the floor. They, they did all this themselves. You need to watch the videos to see where this place started. Oh, how cute. Look at this. So we didn't need to bring Look, in. rough sawn. We got all those barn beams. Yeah. See, this is what I picture in the basement. It's something like this with the beams. This, you know? yes. this is all concrete. He poured these on top of here. Jeez. Jeremy did all this. Yeah. This is all concrete countertops, too. Going upstairs. Now they added this bedroom. Well, they had the bedroom downstairs. It's perfect. It's four twin girls. It's so cozy in here. What do you think, El? I love it so much. It's so cute. So we just arrived at the woods at Cairn Creek, and I can't go—I can't tell you how impressed we are. This is like a little gem hidden in the middle of a otherwise nowhere because there's not a lot up here. But man, this is all handcrafted, hand-built stuff. I watched Jeremy do this on his YouTube channel. We haven't met him yet, but I'm excited to meet him because this guy is a craftsman, man. So we've been hanging out here at the cabin, the woods of Cairn Creek. For a day or so, we tried to go exploring earlier today in the golf cart and then we got rained out. So we're back here, just had a lazy afternoon, ate lunch. Now it's time to address the log in the back of my truck. I wanna to try to get that cut up into some lumber for a future project. So I'm gonna buzz over there and see if Jeremy's around and maybe we can get that uh, wood miser fired up and do something with that. You guys ready to see what they got over there? Yeah. You're gonna be doing something else. You're not interested in the wood miser, are you? What are you interested in? Animals. Animals. All right, we'll find some animals. Hi. Hello. There's the man himself, Mr. Karen Creek. Hi. Just got a tour. <laughs> He's got a golf green, part of the golf hole. I shot a few uh, shots at that green last night from the hack shack up there. This is my kind of place. There are trucks and heavy equipment and golf. 
feel right at home. All right, we're back here at the mill shop. Hey, Jeremy. What's going on, guys? But Jeremy knows a lot more about sawmills than I ever will. So he's uh, he's graciously agreed to cut up this log. You think we can get it out of that truck without smashing the truck? I think so. <laughs> so it looks like we got a white oak we're going to put on the Woodmeister sawmill today. Pretty exciting. I, I knew it was made of wood. I wasn't sure. No, I knew it was an oak, but. So we're saving it from the firewood pile. That's cool. That thing, is right? the main thing. First time running this, I don't know where you turn it on. <laughs> You're building all the confidence I need to know that I'm going to get a new truck. Yep. Like a pro. So I'm around wood all the time, making firewood that is, and never really get to do any lumber or projects like that. I don't know anything about sawmills, but Jeremy does. So Jeremy, can you fill me in on what exactly is this? So I've got a Woodmiser LT35 right here. And Woodmiser is what I think is one of the elite sawmills, but there's a handful of portable sawmills available. But I was always keen on a hydraulic sawmill. So this thing will actually lift, it'll turn the logs. You'll see as we mm -hmm. cut this thing, we slice it open. I'm gonna use the hydraulic parts to make life easier. Even having a portable sawmill can be a lot of work. I mean, it, your lumber is always wet, so it's heavier, but it, my goodness, it's a satisfying project or it's something to have that you can make buildings like this mm -hmm. around the farm, around the property. Yep. Um, the only regret I have is I, I wish I would've bought one 20 years ago. <laughs> it is. We can definitely do it, just for you though, Neil. Well, Fired up. the wife said to pack light, so I only brought one log that fit in the truck bed. <laughs> oh, it's electric. Uh-huh. Let's give it a little love. Uh, there's several different ways we'll approach something like this, but here with this double pit, so we have, that's a center, and that's a center. So basically we want to encase that in a, a, a around a two and a half inch cut so basically we want to be somewhere like this so we want a cut something like that nice so basically i've seen you draw on the end of the logs before you kind of get a idea of what boards are are capable of that particular log based on what you're making at the time get it mapped out and that that tells you how to orient the log to start things off you got to get basically two flat sides. Not necessarily. It depends on what we're cutting. You know, if we're doing just live edge slabs, uh, oh. we can just zip right down through it without I see. spending a whole lot. If we're doing dimensional type lumber, yeah, I'll maximize every cubic foot I can of that mm -hmm. log. And sometimes it can be more head scratching. And we can get more technical, you know, if we're wanting to quarter saw something for cabinetry, trim. Uh, quarter saw and lumber is definitely more time consuming, but it's, uh, it, it provides a better product. So that's orienting the grain so that it's keeps the boards from warping. Yeah, it, somewhat. it makes it, it's a stronger piece of wood to quarter saw it. Plus it's uh, more attractive to the eye. Yeah, so. a lot that goes into it. All right, so with this one here, we got a big piece in the middle. We could maybe make a, a floating shelf or who knows what out of there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I really need to bring this up a little bit. We're not reaching out. So I have these rollers. So these rollers are hydraulic, which if I've got oh. long enough log, I can use these to to level the log out. About eight and a half to the center here. I've still got to roll a little bit, but our height is critical right now. Slide it that way. Yeah, slide it that way. Pretty easy. Ready? I believe so. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually pretty cool looking. Yeah. Wow. Alright, so I can get probably get one more out of this. Uh, and then we'll have to readjust our height to, to cut this part out. So it catches it? Yeah. So the thickness of this is not critical. Right now, it's roughly two and a half inches. Uh, 
So you set it there and then you can measure down. So I'll probably go, I'll start my cut around probably eight and a quarter. It doesn't look too bad. But honestly, I can see where this could start to get a little addictive. Like, well, if you have access to logs, I could see where this would be tempting. Yeah. What I don't should know. Uh, Neil use these boards for, I wonder? Yeah, that's a good uh, good good question. I don't think I'm going to be able to get these done right away because we've got to let them dry, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to get them. So comment down below if you got any suggestions for me for project ideas with these live edge boards that we've just cut. So it's looking good. Well, we got our boards all cut up, loaded in the truck. Jeremy, thanks so much for doing that. Well, thanks for coming down, man. I've been, watching, I've been watching Karen Creek for probably two or three years or more now. So it was, a, it was a treat to me to get to come here and see it. The Airbnb is awesome. The mill shop is awesome. The golf hole is awesome. And the wood miser is fantastic. So thanks a lot. Yep. Check us out, guys. Yeah, Karen Creek is on um, YouTube. He also has a second channel called Spud Run Golf. And... Uh, it's a whole nother world over there on Spud Run Golf. So lots going on. Be sure to check them out. We're going to head on to the next part of our vacation. So have fun. Thanks for all the help. See you. See you later. We're going to take a hike to find out what it is all about the namesake of Cairn Creek. It's Cairn, C-A-I-R-N. And well, there's a pretty interesting history about that, Native American history. So we're going to see if we can find some actual cairns. No, this is where they stack the rocks. There's probably people buried under there. Huh. Uh -uh. Wow. wow, there's a lot of them. Yeah. What we're going to try to do is go to the top. There's a huge rock up there. I'd say those boys got the cheat code to get to the top. We made it, girlies. It looks like we're on the highest rock around here. We're standing up here on the top of the peak looking over Cairn Creek. Looks pretty good. You can see a river over here. The sun's coming out. And uh, Miss Kara's down there somewhere waiting patiently. Okay. You ready to head back down? Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Three steps down to the descent and you're already on the ground. Okay, let's go, girl. Hopefully this one isn't as heart pounding. This camera has a gimbal and it keeps itself level. So right here we're level. Look how high that rock is above you. And then if I pan around, you can see the slope of the ground going out from underneath us. That's level. Yeah, can you see the houses and the barns down there? A little bit. Not? Looks so pretty. Well, we made it back down to the bottom from our hike. Okay, I'm ready for some R&R &R now. That's what vacation's supposed to be, not this <laughs> physical activity. Okay, well this concludes our stay at the cabin here at Cairn Creek. We gotta run the golf cart back and then we're on to the next leg of our vacation journey. Okay, I wanted to take a minute to kind of explain something because this vacation is gonna feel very segmented. So we had had the trip planned to Cairn Creek in Chillicothe, Ohio for quite some time. We were gonna spend four days at a cabin and relax and then come back home to spend the rest of our spring break. But I was picking up the girls from track one Friday evening about a month prior to and I saw them get in and they just, they look so old to me and I felt this sense of urgency. There was, there's things that they're into now that they may not be into next year for spring break. So that night I got online and looked at flights out of Columbus to Orlando so that we could visit where we wanted to go. And uh, I booked flights before we had tickets to the parks or a hotel and we just, we winged it. And so that's how we ended up going from <laughs> Chillicothe, Ohio to Columbus and flew down to Orlando. Now you know. So traditionally, whenever we fly, I like to make the girls figure out everything about our gates, where to put our, where to check our bags, and going through security. So but now they're getting old enough that they pretty much got it all figured out. Okay, what's our gate? What's our gate? It's E35. It's E35. All right, let's go. Two hours, we will board. We're here. <laughs> Where are we? 
way. We made it. So I'm a huge Back to the Future fan and I've made the girls watch all the movies. What do you think of the movies? I think they're pretty good. They're good for all ages. All right, so it's day two. We built in a day to just relax and kick back. So this morning the girls started out by swimming in the pool. They had a nice little competition going. And now we're gonna check out Disney Springs. We're going for the free parts of the trip today. We're gonna to see if we can like, go to Disney Springs, ride the monorail, eat at one of the Disney resorts, but they'll still get our money, but just not, hopefully all. Yeah. Been cruising around and the rain has come and thankfully I'm waterproof, so it's not affecting me. I'm doing a lot of embarrassing with all the dad jokes found some inside stuff to do. We hopped on one of the buses and came over to the Contemporary Resort. Now we're just exploring. We're exploring indoors while it rains outside. We came to check out the Polynesian Resort. We saw it. It's packed. Everybody's doing the same thing because it's raining outside. They're touring the resorts. So now we're going to jump back on the monorail and head towards uh, the Grand Floridian. This Looks swanky. So we've met friends from Germany. When we're in line long enough, then you get to make new acquaintances. This family right over here, we talked to them for about an hour. So hopefully our new friends are watching and they say hi. What do you think? Here's another blast from the past. The Jurassic Park Explorer. It's got the wrong tires on it though. Those are supposed to be BF Goodrich all terrains. There's another familiar face too. I think we've seen everything there really is to see. Otherwise, we're gonna finish out the day back in the wizarding world of Harry Potter. That's where these girls wanna be. This is the line for security at Orlando. All the way up there. And there's a huge queue of people up there. Never seen anything like it, have you? We're just now to the queue. We've made it part way home. We're in Columbus, Ohio. We gotta drive another three hours to get home yet. Well, we made it back from Orlando, Florida, and the weather is pretty nice here. But there's one last little event that's gonna put a nice button on our spring break 2024. And you know what that is? <laughs> that's right. There's a total solar eclipse and we are in 99.9% .9 totality. So my cousin called me earlier this morning and he said he, that he was thinking a good vantage point to set up a time lapse for the eclipse might be from on top of their grain lake, which is about 100 feet up, I suppose. I don't know. And I thought, yeah, that's a pretty good idea. Maybe we'll, we'll do that. So right there it is. Now I just got to crawl up on top of that thing. I'm going to go up top. Okay. Okay, come back and get you later. All right, so the eclipse has started. It's about 10 after 2. You just see it. I'm going to try this with my phone. Oh, yeah. Got my camera with a battery. I'm going to see if I can tape, tape the lens on there. Oh, yeah, it works. I got a camera over there pointed at the sun. I got a camera over there on the mailbox pointed at us. And I got a camera way over there at my cousin's on top of their grain leg. But everyone will have already seen it on the news and in everyone's Facebook feed. So I'm documenting it for us and for you to see what experience we had with it. All right, we're about 13 minutes from totality. I think the drone can stay in the air for about 25 minutes if it just hovers. So I'd like to put it up. Take off. Our mail came almost at the point of totality. <laughs> 
we were just commenting, it's amazing how bright it can be with, like when you look at the sun, there's like hardly any left. It's almost, oh, yeah. Oh. look, look at that. How could it adjust that much? Where are the cats? The barn lights oh. turned on. Oh, oh that's. <gasps> yep, the barn lights are on. Wow. It's really dark. What do you think? Oh my gosh, it feels Wild. like it's like seven o'clock at night. Well, the birds are chirping. Hear the birds? They think it's nighttime. Well, it looks like the best of the show is past us now, but it was pretty neat to get to experience it here at home, I thought. I'm glad. We talked about leaving, but I'm glad we were here. Kira isn't feeling the greatest. She went back inside, but otherwise, we had a great spring break. I had a lot of fun getting to cut that log on the sawmill. What would you guys think of Universal? It was, it was so much fun. It was a lot of fun. So. We might have to try to go back there yet again before you're too grown up. In the meantime, I want to thank you so much for clicking on this video. Hope that you liked it. And if we're lucky, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. Total eclipse of the sun. I hope that was worth it. That's a long climb. More traffic coming north. That's way more traffic than normal. All right, it's time to head back down. I gotta go pick up the girls from track practice. <laughs>